the project came about because of Janina Scott, uh, who is uh, Ridley's wife, but a producer in her own right, and she chased down the rights to this book well over 20 years ago, um, and was really kind of taken by, I guess, the familial struggle, the power struggle between, you know, what it's like for a family to have a dynasty, a, a fashion dynasty. And so um, Janina had an incredible amount of tenacity to stick with it and get this movie made. It, it, it's a, a real testament to a great producer when they stay with something forever. And she stayed with this movie for, you know, decades. And I think it's um, a huge credit to her that it got made and she saw it through. A lot of producers, they get a good piece of material, a book, and they sit on it and they can't get it you know, completed, but Janina saw it to the finish line. So it, the movie got made because of her. Rid wanted to tell it almost in, um, not quite a docu-style, but in a realistic depiction of what this family was like, and then a little bit of a heightened comedy and a little bit of letting the actors kind of take their own, their own path. Um, but more than anything, I think he wanted to showcase the bright and big characters of the Gucci family. The writer who we ended up kind of getting there with the script on, Roberto Mettevagna, did a lot of research, but then ultimately threw it all away and kind of created you know, his own narrative, sticking to the big you know, pillars of, of what happened, but really creating his own dynamics of character and relationship within the people, within the story. So he did a lot of research, read a lot of books, looked at all the record, the court records, um, but ultimately kind of you know, defined his own narrative and wove through the story on his own. Essentially, we have uh, Patrizia Gucci marry into the Gucci family. She marries Maurizio Gucci. She's you know, from a lower class family, a family that's successful in their own right um, in the trucking business. And she kind of gets a taste of wealth and power and what it's like to live this very five-star fancy life. And when she then has a separation with her husband and is kind of cast off from that life, she takes matters into her own hands. Lady Gaga plays Patricia. Um, you know, she is an extraordinary actress, and people probably haven't seen this side of her yet. She did an, an amazing amount of work and research on the character and fully committed in, in becoming Patricia Gucci. She never really broke character. She was always, you know, speaking with the accent, speaking in Italian. Uh, and she gives an extraordinary performance as Patricia. You see all these shades of her. She goes from doting and loving to infatuated to psychotic to murderous, you know, all in the course of the movie. Um, the movie, to jump back to one of your first questions, is almost like an opera, the way the movie is telling itself, where you see, you know, uh, you see comedy, you see tragedy, you see drama, you see despair, you see murder. So she plays all those shades through Patricia, and she's the eyes with which we see the film. Adam Driver is a, a world-class actor and plays Maurizio. Um, he gives a very restrained performance, which is phenomenal. We just worked with Adam on The Last Duel and he plays an entirely different character uh, called Legree in that movie. So for us to make two movies back to back with Adam and see him play those two different characters was really, uh, really great for me as a producer to watch him play these two totally different roles. So Maurizio, he's very calculating in a way, but quiet and reserved, keeps his cards very much to his chest. And I think um, we see him grow from, you know, being almost kind of a, a um, almost like a deer, like a lamb at the beginning of the movie and becomes a wolf. And so you see this transformation of a guy who doesn't quite understand what power and money and wealth and status means at the beginning and he's being led. He's infatuated with his wife, with, with, with uh, Patrizia. And over the course of the movie, you see him kind of grow into this more kind of manipulative, uh, controlling, powerful, um, you know, a, a bit, uh, um, not violent, but just a bit more uh, of a controlling being, and someone who's going to make sure he's in charge of this business in his life. Maurizio, again, starts as kind of very intelligent law student, 
learning uh, the law, learning the fashion business from an outside perspective of, of the law, and then um, understands what it means to have success. Partners with a big financial backer, starts to see Gucci grow in a way that it has not grown before, um, starts to realize that he could have it all for himself, and I think falls out of love, you know, when his wife crosses him. And so we see him, again, start from this place of being a sheep and then turns into a wolf. Rodolfo is played by Jeremy Irons, and uh, he is uh, another just extraordinary world-class actor. We just have a, a you know plethora of these actors. I'm gonna sound like I'm saying the same thing over and over, but the actors are all incredible. And Rodolfo uh, plays Adam Driver, Maurizio's father, and he's very protective of him as his only you know boy. Uh, he's widowed. He's a former actor who has been kind of a passive interest in the Gucci brand. And when, when Stephanie, when Lady Gaga, Patricia starts to enter into his son's life, he kind of tells him not to, to follow through with it. He wants him not to, to pursue her and marry her because he thinks she's in it for the money. Everyone thought that Maurizio couldn't amount to much in this business. Ultimately, they're, you know, they're, they're right. He does grow the business, but I think his spending and the way he carries himself and the way he, he kind of doesn't mind the shop or the down taking of him, but he does breathe life into the business with the decision to hire Tom Ford and to build it. Aldo is played by another iconic legend uh, who's Al Pacino. And um, we see this bright and colorful uh, and a bit sinister uh, character of Aldo Gucci who is really a, a great salesman, but also has a, a bit of a, um, a nasty side to him if you cross him or if you try to lead the business in a way that he doesn't want it. Um, and personally for me, it just was one of the most extraordinary things ever to watch Al, you know, play this character and to work with him. I mean, I've been a fan of his forever and to see him, you know, go toe to toe with these actors was, was a, a cherished piece of, of my work history. It just was amazing. Aldo wants to commercialize the business at any chance he can. He wants to sell knickknacks and mugs and knockoff purses. He wants to open a mall in Japan. Um, he is the, the, the most kind of business sense person of the family. The wonderful Jared Leto plays Paolo under a whole heap of, of incredible prosthetics and makeup, and I think he wins the award for the most patient with the preparation of getting ready for these wonderful days of work. So uh, Jared is another actor who just went through such a, a deep, deep commitment process um, to portray this role. He was never not in character when we were with him. You know, I, I still haven't even met him outside, <laughs> outside of his makeup, which is something that we all wanted to, to give him space, let him do the separation. So um, he's a bit of the comic relief to the movie. He gives a, a remarkable performance as Paolo. Uh, I really think that he and Al uh, Aldo uh, could have their own TV show after the movie, and you'll see it as you see the film. You see Aldo um, embrace his son, you know, both physically and, and with love, but you know that he's, he refers to him as his idiot. And he's just not, he's not a very sharp or successful or substantial person. I think there's a big heart there. He wants to do well. Um, so I think it's a totally different dynamic to Rodolfo and Maurizio. You see a great deal of disappointment in Aldo having to care for his son even as he gets into his older years and worry about him, he's a bit of a liability. So the dynamic's completely different where Maurizio is this accomplished lawyer who has business intellect and skills despite the fact that he goes on later to kind of spend a bunch of money frivolously on the company. Um, Paolo's just lost. We went through a great process of finding the right uh, prosthetic person for Jared and um, a lot of exploration as to what worked and what didn't. 
almost to the last minute. And Jared was extraordinarily hands-on and making sure it looked authentic, looked real. And then with Ridley's tutelage, Ridley, you know, helped form it and shape it with Jared and, and wanted to make sure that when he was in the rugby scene, he was in some of these physical you know, altercations when he was under big bright lights, you know, both outside at Aldo's birthday and then also later on at his fashion show, that none of that stuff could read, you know, false or read fake. And so Jared spent hours and hours, weeks, with, uh, with a great prosthetic artist who we work with to make sure that that look was perfected and didn't just look like a joke. It looked really like Paolo Gucci.